Big O notation. Big O notation is a tool used to analyze the running time of an algorithm. Previously, we saw how to count the number of operations in an algorithm to arrive at the running time in terms of the input size n. In this video, we will see the drawbacks that the previous method faces and how and why big O notation is required. So let us recap what we did previously. We had an algorithm which took a value n and calculated the sum from 1 until that number n. So I'm going to rewrite the algorithm which we have already discussed previously. This is the algorithm which we have previously discussed. As you know, the first step is going to take unit time. The second step will take 2n plus 2 time. This step will take 2n and returning the sum will take 1 unit of time. In total, the time taken will be 4n plus 4. Now, what if I use the same logic to calculate the sum until n, but change the implementation of the algorithm just slightly? Let's see how the time taken changes in that case. Now, in the second implementation of the same logic, the first step takes one unit of time. The loop is exactly the same, so it will take 2n plus 2 time. This step, which on its own will take two units of time, occurs n times, so this will be 2n. This step, which takes one unit of time on its own, but since it happens n times, will take n units of time. Then we return the sum, which is another one unit of time. So now, if we add all these up, we can see that the time taken by this implementation is 5n plus 4. As you can see, when we count the primitive operations to arrive at the time taken by the algorithms, the time changes with any slight change in implementation. Now let's look at the graph made for the two versions of the time. On our graph, I'm going to take the x-axis as the input size and the y-axis as the time. So our first time was 4n plus 4. When I plot that, I get a line like this. Assuming that this is 4, the y-intercept is 4. 
Now, in the second implementation of our algorithm, we got the time as 5n plus 4. When we plot this, we get a line like that. Definitely, the two times vary, but they only vary very less. It is important to note that both these time functions are both linear in nature. That is, they both grow the same way with respect to n. This means that when I change n by, a, say, a factor of 2, that I double n, the time also will more or less double. So these two time functions grow in a linear fashion. Let's take an example of another function which has time, say, 5n square plus 4. In such a case, the plot of the graph would be something like this. As you can see, the third time, or the one which is shown in green, is time which becomes larger quadratically. The growth of the blue and the red time is in linear fashion, but the green one grows quadratically. As you can see, the difference between two linear functions is almost insignificant when you compare uh, the difference between a linear function and a quadratic function. When we analyze algorithms, we do not want to worry about how the algorithm is implemented. Instead, we only want to look at how the time grows with respect to the input size given. Therefore, we are only worried about the growth of the time of an algorithm and not the actual details of the time itself. For example, the first two, we are only worried about the fact that it is linear in time. And the third one, we are worried about the fact that it is quadratic in time. We are not concerned with the constants or the nitty-gritties of the actual implementation of the algorithm. This is because those details do not play a major role in how the time grows along with the input. And so, we can consider those details of the implementation of the algorithm insignificant. When counting primitive operations, we have to take into account all the details of the implementation of the algorithm. This is not something we are concerned with. We are solely concerned with the growth of the time with respect to the input size. And so, that is the drawback we face when we count primitive operations to come to, a, to the time taken by the algorithm and you, when we use that to analyze algorithms. When analyzing algorithms, we want to look at purely the growth of the time and we are not interested in the details. This is where we use big O notation, which gives us the growth of the time. The big O notation of a particular function gives the order of growth of that function. So let us look at what exactly that means. Let us say I have a function f of x. So this is f of x. We say that g of x is the big O of f of x. If g x is greater than f of x for all points after a point x naught. Let me repeat that. If we have a function f of x, there exists a function g of x such that g of x is greater than or equal to 
fx for all points of x where x is greater than some x naught. As you can see, this holds for this graph. g of x will continue to be greater than f of x at all points after a point x naught. So let's see how this would work in a few examples. We say that f of x is order of g of x. This would be the big O notation for f of x. g of x essentially gives the upper bound on the growth of f of x because it bounds the function. This is important because it gives us an idea about how the function is going to grow. Let's look at a few examples. Let's say the function we have is 5n plus 3. We determine the big O by finding the dominant term in its growth. What this means in simple terms is, we choose that term which contains n, which grows the most rapidly. In this case, it is 5n. Also, in big O notation, we need not worry about the constants because we are only worried about the growth. So we say that f of n is order of n. Let's look at another example. In this case, we look at which term is the most dominant term in terms of growth. The most dominant term in terms of growth is definitely 5n square because it grows quadratically. We ignore the constants and therefore our function is order of n square. This is how you determine the big O notation of different functions. When we apply this to our time functions which we have attained by counting primitive operations in the worst case of an algorithm, we can compare different algorithms by comparing the different big O's of their time functions. That will give us a good estimate of which algorithm will take significantly longer than the others to execute. Therefore, big O is a very important tool we use when comparing algorithms based on the growth Si on the growth of the time with respect to the input size.